everybody, welcome to a Snow Talk video today, and it's going to be a short one because uh, I'm running a little bit behind, in case you haven't noticed on the clock here today. Uh, fog, and not only just fog, but uh, moisture gradually increasing here from uh, the south will eventually win over things here. So we're going to become very, uh, well, it's already quite humid out, foggy and drizzly, kind of misty outside. That flow will kick in a little more of the southeast very gently tonight. Uh, but enough to nudge our numbers, uh, or I would say uh, nudge our numbers up, that's what I'm trying to say, uh, into the 40s during the overnight period. And unlikely you'll wake up in the 50s the way it's trending right now for tomorrow morning. Uh, so the, this is the coolest part of the next 12 hours, really, is uh, right now. And uh, we'll see a gradual increase. And uh, then we will deal with quite a bit of warming coming our way before we deal with the main headline, which is the main focus of this blog today is our bowling ball that is rolling in now into L.A. with flooding uh, just north of L.A. taking place. Uh, this is a very potent system, very far to the south in latitude, heading into the Four Corners area, actually south of the Four Corners area into Texas. Then it'll begin its splitting process, and it's that southern piece we need to watch. And here is how the dynamics look overall. And what you're looking at is basically the, the energy here of the storm. Here it is, back here into California. And now watch what happens as it rolls out. At this point, once it gets into uh, Thursday morning, this is where we start to see the bit of the, the splitting taking place. This piece here is going to aim itself in the Great Lakes. It's going to allow for that warm surge. I mean, look at Little Rock at 2 a.m., already to 60 degrees. That northern piece will jet north. The southern piece then is going to actually come in and dig underneath that into portions of Louisiana as we head into Friday. And it's that uh, digging process. How far does it dig to the south? How long does it take to get itself organized and become a, a very potent low? Those are all questions that will determine not only its strength, but also its eventual track as it rolls in from the Gulf states. All right, so let me show you how this evolves here. Here we go as we head into uh, Friday morning. The southern piece begins its dig. This is the Euro, by the way, you're looking at. Look at the difference in temperature, by the way. Five in Des Moines, 24 in St. Louis, 57 here in Louisville, two o'clock in the morning, but Little Rock, 34. You're already seeing the effects here of the uh, the digging. It's throwing the warm air wrapping around into the low. So it's going to have a very warm core to it. Uh, very uh, unique setup here. Uh, the cold air will be pulled on the back side, but a lot of warm air ahead of it. And then as we head into uh, Friday night, the low emerges out. We begin our drop, 31 degrees at 7 o'clock in the evening. Cold air on the back side of that, and then it rolls up into the northeast. Now, a lot of you are already asking, is this thing going to go northwest of us? Is this going to go to our southeast? Um, those kind of questions are being answered today because it is now on shore and uh, getting sampled today. So really, the first uh, suite of models coming in for the midday are really starting to show this. Here is how some of them look as they begin that deepening process. GFS, which is updating right now, so this may change by the time you watch the blog, it has a relatively open trough, open wave here, not as deeply organized as it had on previous runs. Uh, here comes the Euro. It's beginning its dig. The lowest pressures aim at itself mainly over northern uh, Mississippi and uh, Alabama. Meanwhile, the NAM uh, is coming in and it's digging a little more to the south. As we head into Friday, we begin to see the Euro begin its pull to the north. The NAM does the same thing, but it's a little more to the south. The, the lower pressures aiming itself more toward the Smoky Mountains. The Euro aiming the pressures more over, say, central and southeast Kentucky. GFS, really, it starts to really crank it up east of the mountains there. Again, it, I'm not sure this runs correct on um, how it's playing out for it, but you can see it's uh, mainly far to the south and east. The overall idea, guys, and this is what we say often, it's really going to be a likely a blend of the three of these is how this is going to play out. I'm not entirely sure yet the, the Euro Northwest jog is going to be the reality. The amount, the amount of digging this is going to have, and there's a little vort coming in behind it as well that will be arriving for the weekend, I think will be enough to do what the NAM is trying to do and really pull it uh, more toward the Smoky Mountains. Having said that, only looking at Friday alone right now, I think the winter impact potential does appear higher in the north and northwest sections here of wave country for Friday for winter impacts, a lower threat in the central and certainly uh, not much of an issue southeast. I think the warm air will rule most of the day Friday south and east of us. Uh, but this is going to really depend on that digging process and then eventual track into the uh, mountain areas of uh, Kentucky. Whether or not it, it tracks uh, more northwest like the Euro what remains to be seen with the new update coming in in about a couple of hours from now. But this is just a early snapshot, guys. I got a feeling we'll be declaring this an alert day on Friday and possibly even Saturday. 
uh, because this will impact travel. Even if we miss out on the big snow side of things, you got to keep in mind we're, we're going to see a significant temperature drop after quite a bit of rain, and the flash freeze potential is there. I mean, there's going to be a lot of wind, but we got to watch the temperature crash because we could run into icy roads even with a small amount of snow out of this, or even no snow at all and just rain. Uh, could be a problem for us for Friday night and Saturday. So I think it's going to have an impact on our travel and our weather in general for Friday and Saturday. But I know you snow lovers, you just want to know, is this going to be a big snow or not? We don't know that yet, but I do know that someone in the Ohio Valley is going to get nailed by this one. So uh, stay tuned. All right, we'll have much more as the day evolves and we get more data today now that it's on shore. So hate in there, snow lovers.